<coughs> you my pride and joy, etc. LNG, I think you'll swell, and you really do me better. Hello, hello, my friend, hello. Just called to tell you so. I've got a cold and can't sing. Who are some of the uh, musical artists that I like? Neil Diamond, Steely Dan, The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Who, The Kinks, Beach Boys, The Eagles to a small extent. <clears throat> Well, one minute and 22 seconds and nobody here. I've got a cold at the mo moment, <clears throat> like a really dry throat. Sugar, da 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 Ah, oh, honey, honey, you are my candy girl. And you got me wanting you. I just can't believe the love and that you feel for me. I just can't believe it's true. You're the lady, you're the lady that loves me. I'm the lady, the lady who. You're the fella, you're the fella that rocks me. A Rockefeller, a Rockefeller. You're my little lady. I'm your little lady who. I love your face, it's in the right place. <clears throat> You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off of you. You feel like heaven to touch. I want to tell you so much. At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just too good to be true Can't take my eyes off of you Now you see, I preferred Andy Williams' version of that song to Frankie Valles and the Four Seasons. Though Frankie Valles was the original, in my book, Andy Williams did the better version. Almost there, we're almost there. Andy Williams, man. So hello everybody, how are you? Talk, baby, talk. Ding ding, 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 ding ding. The local rock group down the street is trying hard to learn their song. Hi, Stinson and Serenade. The weekend squire just came out to mow his lawn. Mickey Dolenz, one of the greatest voices of the sixties, vocally. Monkeys should be in the Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Only one monkey surviving, Mickey Dolenz. I believe Mike Nesmith died last year. Who used to like the monkeys? I used to love the monkeys. I'll tell you what song by the birds is my favourite song. <clears throat> Excuse me again, it's my throat. Eight Miles High, brilliant, co-written with Gene Clark before he left the band. Beauty, uh, brilliant, psychedelic type of song. Eight Miles High. Dun, 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 dun. I can't sing 
like I normally can because I have a cold brewing. So what's everybody been up to? And what's everybody doing right now? You see, here's my thing about music, especially music from the 1960s. I think overall American music from the 1960s was better than its British counterpart. I'm sure you had the Beatles from the UK or Great Britain as it was called then, but overall the Americans were better. I mean, brilliant songs like White Rabbit, Jefferson Airplane, Light My Fire, The Doors, Hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? The Doors again. Um, pop songs. Uh, Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. Young Girl, Woman, Woman. Lady Willpower. The Turtles. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. We're expecting... Um, more water and I thought I heard somebody calling from outside the gate and even when we come to the 1970s there were some fine English bands British bands but equally there were some beautiful American bands from the 70s the Eagles I like the Eagles to an extent I mean one of these nights for me is the perfect pop rock song in fact i think it's the best pop rock song of all time now one might dispute stairway to heaven but that was never released as a single in the uk so i don't count that um let's think of some other great bands of the 70s well in the uk we had bands like slade who you probably never heard of you might have heard of them super tramp who you've more than likely heard of but man you had steely dan wow steely dan the album asia i don't think it gets better than that so for me i've always enjoyed american music more but that's just me what kind of music did you enjoy or do you enjoy the Carpenters even. Say what you will, they were cool. Well, they weren't cool, their music was good, put it that way. So let's talk about the Philippines because that's where I am. Are there any questions? So on the video I put out today, my recognition of foreign divorce certificate We'll be going to court next uh, this Tuesday coming and then I'll get the certificate that allows me to remarry here in the Philippines without that even though I am officially divorced I got divorced in the UK because I married here in the Philippines originally they don't accept that uh, Matt can I bring my phone and laptop without paying import taxes I should think so, I brought my phone, nobody said a word. I should imagine the only time you'd pay import tax would be if it's a new, maybe laptop in the box or something unopened. Even then I don't know, but if you're using it, yeah, you're not paying any taxes on your phone or your laptop, that's for sure. Yeah, so like I was saying, on the sixth, uh, 16th of this month, which is Tuesday, I should get that, finally get that certificate, which has cost me 70,000 peso, needlessly, because if they allowed divorce in the country, <clears throat> I'd have been fine. But anyway, it is what it is. So we're in the middle of a drought here caused by the El Nino. 
Right, so the situation, Matt, is this. I was married to a Filipina in 2006. I married her in Cebu City. She came back to the UK. We were together about seven years. She left me. And a year after that, divorced me. <clears throat> so we've got the divorce. She divorced me in the UK. Not a problem. The divorce is fine. However, when I met my Filipina online and I came here to live, I thought, fine, I've got my divorce certificate. I've even got my original marriage certificate from Cebu with my ex. Just go to the registrar, plain sailing. We can get the marriage license to get married. Not so. The reason being was I married my ex in the Philippines. So say she'd have been a Filipina and I married her in the UK, in America, in Europe, anywhere else, the divorce would be fine. They would recognize it here. But because I got married on Philippine soil, they don't recognize divorce. So I was unable to marry the girl I met who I'm with now. So she's my, um, even though I refer to her as my wife, she's still technically my fiance. So at first I thought, geez, have I got to go through annulment? No, because I'm a foreigner, you can get what's known um, as a recognition of foreign divorce certificate. If you're both Filipino, then you have to go annulment routes, which is far more expensive, takes many more years, and may not even be granted. But if one of you are foreign, her or you, you can go down the route I've gone down. Now the lawyer I'm using is a friend of the families. Um, she did two basic packages. One was the basic package, 50,000 peso. But I think you've got to do a lot of running back and forth to the courts. I didn't want to do that. So the deluxe package was 70,000 peso. You go into her office, the lawyer, you fill out all the forms, you bring your marriage certificate, your divorce papers, um, your, your passport, I think your birth certificate, etc. And she does all the running around. And it should have happened in March, but there was a Muslim holiday in Mindanao. So the courts were closed and it got postponed for this Tuesday coming. So once I get the all clear, I get the certificate, it should be a formality, then I can apply my marriage license at the registrar I mean the plan was to come here marry my Filipina then we have a child but we did it the other way around because there was no other way yeah so you do find in the the videos Matt I refer to her as my wife though technically she's still my Filipina uh, she's still my fiance rather And that's the problem, Matt. Not in all cases, but bringing a Filipino back to your home country. I did that. And the girl, she was a quiet little thing, four foot 11. She'd worked overseas in Iraq. So it's not like she'd only been in the Philippines. She was fairly educated. She got in with a crowd of Filipinas in the UK near where we lived and changed. Suddenly I wasn't good enough. <clears throat> you won't get that or you shouldn't get that if you stay in the Philippines and you've married a Filipina. Oh, my voice is really croaky. I'm having to eat Ricola herbal tablets, cranberry. Yeah, Matt. I think everywhere in the West. Because think about it. You're Filipina, not in all cases, don't ever generalise, but in a lot of cases, let's say, they will change, they will become more westernised. Even if they're hanging out with a load of Filipinas, those Filipinas have become westernised. <laughs> God knows what it is, Andy.
Uh, I don't know what I've got. I've got, I think, the beginnings of a cold. <clears throat> My voice keeps going dry and croaking up. How's Andy? <laughs> See, I like Andy Omar. You see, some of the um, vloggers that I like, I'll be honest, I don't watch as many now. When I was in the UK, I used to watch, maybe not all of them, but a lot, as you would, because you're dreaming about coming to the Philippines. Back in those days, people like Filipina P, Geo, people like Philly in the Philippines. Now, I don't watch those types at all. I find them too shallow. People like Andy Omar, um, even though Allo De Winter doesn't do many videos nowadays, him and Mike, MYK, those three particularly, they're not everybody's type of vloggers. Who cares? I'm not everybody's type. But what I like about those three guys, they talk from their heart. Whether you agree with them, whether you don't, that's your choice. I'm sure each of those guys would say, you don't have to agree with me. I see things the way I see them, and I'm reporting them the way I see them. You can take it or you can leave it. And that's what I like. They're not sugar-coating things. They, they tell life as it is. That's what life is. If you really truly believe every single day, no matter where you live, it's going to be beautifully sunny, you are mistaken. Perhaps in the Sahara, for quite a long period of time it might be, you're going to get rainy days. And those guys, they, they are like painters. They paint pictures, portraits of how life really is, of how people really are. Andy, for example, He'll go after people who are up to no good. And is not particularly interested if you're on the straight and narrow. Why should he be? Everything's fine with you. He'll point things out from the ones that are not keeping the straight and narrow. And I do find that interesting. And the way the three of them, Mike, Andy, Allo, the way they put over a conversation is I like it I like their styles they have a a good grasp of the English language but for me it's not just that it's just the way they put out their sentences if those guys were rappers I'd dig them but that's me excuse me eating it's just for my voice it's a Ricola I find people like, I don't know about you, people like Filipina P. No offence to her, her videos are edited very well, a nice background, but they're not real. They're just not real. Let's assume she was doing a video and you can see the whole of her. And she's talking to someone. And let's assume she's moving her foot. Everything she's doing, to me, is like predetermined to be cute. People like Andy do what they feel. Now, at the moment, I don't know, maybe Andy will change. He's not going to do a video about me doing this and doing that because I haven't done this or done that. He will only take, oh sorry, I like Allo. Yeah, Allo, Andy, Allo was on here the other day. I was really shocked because he was one of my heroes. When I used to be in the UK, I used to listen to that, that program they had called Riff Raff Radio. And that's where I first heard of Allo. And I thought, Jesus, that guy, the way he talks is like poetry. Maybe I'm talking BS here, but for me, 
because I love the English language. I write songs, I write lyrics. So I love it when someone can construct sentences that resonate with me. That's probably, Andy, why the likes of all of us, apart from the fact we're not female, don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers the way, say, the Filipina P does. Because we don't talk... Okay, because we don't sugarcoat everything. Because we're just not that way, uh, genetically made, I guess. We say it how it is, and sometimes it might offend people. And don't forget, this is to everyone, we all have some kind of persona when we have a channel. We're all acting to some degree to you, the audience, even the Filipina P. So you can hear Andy, and he might blast somebody out. I think you had a spat with um, that regular guy, guy. But I'm pretty sure, in real life, if that regular guy was having a heart attack or something, and Andy was walking by, I'm sure Andy wouldn't walk by and leave him. He would call for help. So all of us put on some kind of facade. Some more than others, and that doesn't mean to say what we say is not the truth on here, but we're playing to you. If I was just acting normally, I maybe would sit here and just sit here. I know that's not true. I'm not kind of like that, but I've got to be more am animated, if I can say the word, because you would lose interest. And I'm sure there are people in here that will lose interest. And I can see there were, because I had 10 people before and I've only got four now. Plus with me, I'm always conscious. I don't know about you, Andy, you're probably not. Probably Mike isn't, and probably Allo isn't. If I talk too slow, I'm conscious, I, I, I'm paranoid. People are gonna think he's talking monotonously, boring. So I speed up the way I talk. So I speed up and I trip over my words because I'm speeding up, talking too fast. And then I think, oh, am I talking too fast? So I'm thinking of all these things on my videos, not good really, but what the hell. But yeah, Andy I like, I like that guy. So, has anybody else got anything to say? I'm only talking on here why my little baby, my one year old child, he's asleep in the bedroom. <clears throat> All's quiet on the Western Front. Andy, I think you're from Peru? I think you're from Peru. I can't be certain. Or oh, maybe Andy's gone. Maybe one of these days I'll set it up so you guys can come on here and talk. Ah, uh, yeah, cool. Do you ever go to Peru on vacation at all, Andy, to see your family? You know where I'd love to go? I never will do, Argentina. That's supposed to be a fairly nice country. So Andy, are you, do you live here in the Philippines now or are you still based in America? I think you might be here actually, but do you live in the Philippines full time? <coughs> Jeez. Like I said, I've caught some kind of cold. My throat is so dry, boy. Oh, okay. Fair enough, Andy. 
So, I guess you've lived in America much of your life then. America, I've never been to. The nearest I've been to America would be watching the movies on TV or the cinema. I know quite a bit about American history. I know I'm quite good at general knowledge, but never actually been there. I've only really traveled, obviously, to Philippines, quite a few countries in Europe and Ireland. Qatar, that's where the plane stopped off en route to the Philippines. Never South America, never Australia, nor Hong Kong, nor Japan. But yeah, going back to say someone like Andy as a vlogger. For me, another thing I find interesting about vloggers, I'm talking about the expat or people that are vlogging about the Philippines, let's say, is when they bring something different, something new to the table. For me, I just don't think people like Philly in the Philippines does that. Or the Filipina P. Not for me. I just don't feel she does that. It's boring. But these guys. Ah, Angeles City. Is that not near where um, Philly in the Philippines lives, I think? So, yeah. As I was saying, I like people that bring something different to the table. And that's what someone like Andy does. Uh, but all he does is troll. I don't call it trolling. If all Andy ever did was not have a, a YouTube channel, you never saw his face and he just left comments. Say his name was P. Say the avatar was a P or a Q. And all he did was left negative comments the whole time. Then he's a troll. Because for me, he's got a channel and he can articulate what he's saying. He doesn't just say, I don't like this person and give no reason. I don't like that person. <laughs> he gives a constructive criticism. That's the difference. Constructive criticism is okay. It's when you're criticizing for the sake of it that it's maybe not appropriate so Andy uh, well it's a stupid question but I'm guessing you're retired out here uh, that you don't work in the Philippines is what I mean this is not I can tell this is I, I think this is my fourth no my third live stream and this is the worst one by far I can feel it I'm not feeling too well it's not that interesting you know even when I'm making a video I can tell if it's a good video or not because as I'm doing it the words that are coming out of my big mouth are good or they're not good and in my head, I'm thinking, oh, sh oh, damn, damn, this is not going to be a good video. Oh, well. Oh, OK. Oh, cool. That's, that's, that's nice, Andy. You see, Andy, again, I don't know Andy particularly. I don't know his history. But he's someone else. Like when I talk about motivation. He, as in Andy... He could have said, well, you know what? My family originated from South America. That's where I work remotely because I have some kind of link. But he thought, for whatever reasons, the Philippines. And he was brave enough as a person to come all this way from America. It takes guts, trust me. Hi, White Van Man. They're fine. There's no problem with uh, the Muslims I've met here, to be honest with you. 
some of my wife's family are Muslims. I've not had a, a problem. Now, I don't know where you're from, white van man, but I'm from the UK. I wouldn't mind betting there's more Muslims in the UK than there are in Mindanao. They're different Muslims. They're most, the majority originate from Pakistan or Pakistan origin. Yeah, I've not found any problems with um, Muslims. <laughs> oh, you're in the UK. Okay, cool. So I was living in London, Enfield. I don't know if you know Enfield, suburb of London, North London. Oh, you're back from Mindanao. Where in Mindanao were you? I'm guessing maybe Davo City or somewhere. You take care, Andy, and thanks for dropping in. This is not really going to be a, a long live anyway. It was impromptu. Okay. Did you like Mindanao? Like I said, excuse the way I'm talking today. I've got a cold coming on. <clears throat> there are many other vloggers I do like. I haven't mentioned all of them, only. Mention three. Oh, I've never heard of that place, White Van Man. <coughs> That's good. I live in the western uh, Mindanao Peninsula. Oh, regular guy. Hi there. <coughs> I've never even heard of it, regular guy, Dakak. Dakak. Oh, really? Thank you, regular guy. You can tell I'm a complete nutcase, can't you? You know, regular guy, I don't know if you ever used to watch my videos when I first started. I was called Postcard Mindanao. My videos were as boring and as straight as they could be. And then I realised, you know what, this ain't going to work. So I had to become my natural self. Crazy. Oh, really? Huh. I was kind of normal back then. I deleted all the videos twice from those days. I had about 140 videos, deleted a lot of them, started again, had another 140 odd, deleted the whole lot of them, started again. You see, that's the funny thing, regular guy. There are a lot of people that didn't like them. Do you know what? This shows you. you. You think I'm a nutcase. You think I'm a nutter. Let me show you. Let me tell you what kind of a nutter I really am. So when I used to show those videos, I used my, my old Samsung phone. 
the one that I got in the UK. I think it was an S8, top of the range, what, seven, eight odd years ago. And it served me well when I first came here. Then it started to go wrong. Still works, but not trustworthy enough to start filming when I'm out and about. So I got this Samsung here in the Philippines. Is it A A20 or something? It's crap, it's garbage. There doesn't seem to be a stabilizer on the video. Hence, I have to, when I video now, keep everything still. But this is where I'm a complete nutter. I bought a GoPro camera in the UK two years before I came here. So the GoPro is four years old. I've never once touched it. I should be using my GoPro and filming things out and about with a GoPro. But in my head, I'm thinking, ah, damn, it's too complicated to use and to transfer what I filmed. Because I'm too flipping lazy to figure out how to, once I've filmed something on the GoPro, how to send it back. It, I haven't got a laptop at the moment. I've got to get a laptop. So I've been using my phone uh, for uploading stuff to YouTube. So it's how do I transfer what I filmed on my GoPro into my phone in order to upload it onto YouTube. Oh, I don't know. And I tell you what, regular guy, I've got to get a, a, a laptop soon. I will be getting one. We've got a new shopping mall that's just opened and there's going to be a brand new computer shop that's soon to be opened. There's still one or two shops that aren't stores that aren't opened yet in the mall. And that's because of my Bitcoin. There is no way I'm touching any Bitcoin on a, on a flipping damn phone. I've got to be using a laptop at the very least if I'm going to transfer or cash out any part of Bitcoin. Oh, um, the mall's Grand something. It's a funny name. It's just, it opened about the 5th of December, just prior to Christmas. Um, not really um, maybe one of those Russian <clears throat> companies I can't think of them at the top of my head one beginning with A I can't think of its name I just want a, a decent one with a decent sized screen you know I don't want some tiny little 14 inch screen maybe at least a 15 inch screen listen I know Apple IMAX are probably the best, but I ain't spending that kind of money. I just want one that's functional, that's reliable. And predominantly, it's for my Bitcoin. But also, it's better to be on YouTube with a laptop than always on a stupid cell phone, mobile phone, whatever you call it. Oh, OK. I can believe that. Uh, I've only once been to Dipalog when I arrived, Dipalog Airport. I did go to Jollibee there. I see a lot of um, Filipinos. There was something on Facebook, my wife told me. A lot of them are up in arms at Jollibee. Their chicken is getting smaller and smaller. I don't particularly like Jollibee. I prefer McDonald's. Oh, OK. Out of uh, contract, uh, out of comfort. That's because you're used to it, regular guy. Regular guy, I'm guessing you work remotely as well in the Philippines. <laughs> Do you know what, regular guy? I don't like Jolly B. The one in the UK in London that opened about five years ago was better than the ones here. My favourite was Burger King in the UK, but nearly all the Burger Kings are closed in the UK. They recently began to open Wendy's again in the UK. Regular guy, you're so right. 
It was going in a weird direction, I think, long before the pandemic, but the pandemic just sealed it. I think the world began to go in a weird direction with the end of the Cold War. That's when I noticed, little by little, things were begin beginning to get unhinged. And now the dam has opened and the world is mad. There's still some sanity here in the Philippines, but the West, alas, no. The UK even more so. Yeah. I tell you why, regular guy. You ever heard this saying? The enemy is within. White van man, the enemy was always within. Sure, we have external enemies, of course. But the enemy has always been within. Our governments are the enemies of the people. If you have a revolution, you get rid of the people with purges that are in power. But unfortunately, you just replace those in time with other people of the same ilk. No. Tell me something, regular guy. And I think the same goes for the UK and everywhere. Am I right in thinking some of your politicians enter politics not being wealthy but if they spend any length of time in politics they end up multi-millionaires a la nancy pelosi etc i wonder how they do that because the money they're making from being a politician doesn't afford that yeah <laughs> You know, it's a funny thing, regular guy. You say you watch my videos and you're doing fairly good. Your channel's doing well. You've got a bit of a name for yourself. I wouldn't ever think that people like you would even know, A, that my channel exists and B, have an interest. A, I'm not American. Well, I can be American if you really want me to. No, I'm not American and I'm off the charts but you listen and I know you had an argument a spat with Andy Omar he listens Alo de Winter listens and God knows who maybe Filipina P listens because I am Nancy hi folks her sister well regular guy when I was younger I used to watch the Partridge family David Cassidy and the Partridge family. And when I was a really young kid, the monkeys. Hi there, Ian. How are you? Where's your Cornish pasty? Whenever I watch one of Ian's videos, I get angry with him. If that guy is not eating, I don't, I'm not interested in his damn videos. The minute I see him eating something, I just get this relaxfulness all over. Jeez. And when he's tucking into a Cornish pasty, I could kill him. Oh, dear me. Yeah, it's hot here. I was saying, my wife was saying in Dipilog, I think in the next two days, the temperature index so the index isn't the actual temperature. I think it's how hot it's going to feel. It's going to be 51 degrees they're expecting in Dipilog in the next few days. <laughs> no, I love this brick box thing. I just love it when I... <laughs> Listen, Ian, if I lived in the UK, it wouldn't mean a damn thing, you eating a Cornish pasty. I'd go to Greg's and buy one better than brick box. But I, I'm not, I haven't got access to Greg's. So watching Ian eat is the next damn best thing. I just like that guy eating. Ian, you remind me of Graham Kerr. I, you're probably too young, the galloping gourmet. I used to like watching him eat as well.
<laughs> hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Oh, 22 in Sydney. My cousin lives in uh, Brisbane, same age as me. He's lived there since the early 80s. Topo, one of your... I, I don't particularly like cricket, but I know one thing. One of the greatest fast bowlers of all time, Dennis Lilly. And I know you're going to laugh at me. Do you know my favourite Australian lager? You're going to call it crap. You don't even drink it in Australia. People in the UK would call it crap, but I liked it. Foster's. You know why I liked it? Because it was tasteless. I just liked it for some... Ask regular guy. I'm a nutcase. Yeah, Foster's. In the UK, I loved it. It was tasteless, and I loved it for that. Yeah, Dennis Liddy. Do you know what? You know why I like Dennis Liddy? This is going back to the 70s, and I guess it was during the ashes. I haven't a clue. It was the early 70s. My cousin is a bit older than me. He was a doctor. He was a junior doctor training back then. And, I always, and he was mad on sport, soccer, cricket, every sport. And at his hospital at the time, he treated Dennis Lilly. And ever since then, I always had that. I know Dennis Lilly's dead now, but I always liked the guy. But he was a great bowler. I prefer it. The only other lager I ever really liked was Tuborg from the pub, Draft. Foster's in the can I liked, or Draft, I didn't mind. No, Cebu, boss man, I know everybody laughs at that Foster's. I just don't appreciate good beer, that's why. I prefer Diet Coke, but still. you know what I just can't see with these bloody sunglasses on the text because it's shaded when you do this um, horizontal live thing is he is who did I get him mixed up with or oh, was it Shane Warner Shane Warner I mean didn't didn't he die I think he did now that's a bad mistake by me about Dennis Lilly. Topo, is he still revered as a legend over there? Yeah, yeah, I got it mixed up. Is Dennis Lilly still revered? Still respected, I mean. Ian, you're still there. If you're still there, give me your damn Cornish pasty and sausage roll. I don't care what your wife thinks. Give it to me. She might not like you giving me your Cornish pasty. That's between you and her. Listen, one day in the future, if you and I are back in the UK, I would treat you. We can go to Greg's. That's a bakery. And I will get you as many Cornish pasties as you want. Until that day comes damn well walk all the way here and give me your pasty by hand that's all i ask oh can you also bring some hp sauce i don't like that brand you use it looks like something like a little brand or something i don't like those funny brands hp sauce hellman's mayonnaise heinz salad cream no other makes ian i can tell from your videos i am a lot more fussy about food than you i always was ask my mother i was a little pig and i'm still like that now i could be wrong and that make of brown sauce that you've got might be good i know me i'd say eh, not as good as hp and you buy those 
those baked beans. I'm sure I used to see that brand in Lidl's. Okay, I can, Ian, that's, a, that's the nearest I'm going to ever get a, a Cornish pasty out of you. Do you know what you are, Ian? You're a tease. Because I watch you eat, enjoying... No, seriously, are they nice pasties? Do they taste like back home? Okay, he, uh, you probably know, Ian, but I'm going to give you a little history lesson. Do you know why on Cornish pasties they have that ridge? It's because the tin miners, their hands were dirty, so they used to hold the pasty on that ridge and just eat the pasty and not the ridge. And also the proper pasties, the original, half of it would have been meat and half of it would have been fruit, as in dessert. <laughs> now I was only joking. No, but I do like your videos when you eat, not just pasties. I don't know why. You, you've just got a, a nice way of cooking. I don't know why. I know you make simple, you, I'm not talking about your wife. You make just simple things, but I just like the way. I didn't, in one of your videos, you like, I like Lay's, but I don't, I've got bored of that flavour you like, that sour cream crap. I just like, there's one that's so hard to get here. You can only get it in Zamboanga City now. It's Lay's and it's Mexican, they're Mexican one. I mean, it's made in America. It's chili and lime. That's the best one. They do a ketchup flavour as well, but they're hard to find. The chili and lime, the ketchup, or the ready salted are my favourite lays. I'm not so mad on that sour cream one anymore. So Ian, I, I know in one of your videos you say you have a couple of beers every night is it red horse or is it san miguel or is it some other brand or just whatever you can get hold of what is the brand i'm guessing it's maybe red horse because i've seen you with a bottle of red horse yeah when you were in the uk ian did you ever have special brew did you ever try it or barley wine And how does Red Horse compare? I know Special Brew is stronger and Barley Wine is even stronger than Red Horse. But in terms of flavour, do you like the flavour? Oh, Boddington's. Boddington. So therefore, Ian, would you ever have a San Mig? If somebody offered you a San Mig, a can of San Mig, apple or lemon. Oh, you have the Guinness as well. Does your wife drink? I'm guessing she drinks San Miguel or something like that. I know, it's Ian, your, your wife's got a sense of humour. i tell you how I know that. When you're talking and she's there, excuse my stuffed nose, I've got a cold brewing. I see her in the background doing all these things. Oh, yeah. Your shandies, cool. And you use Sprite, I'm guessing, for the lemonade. Oh, red wine. And the good thing about you, and, um, Andy, Ian, is you've been with your wife many, many years. You, if I, my memory serves me well, Met her in 2007. The reason I remember that was because I got married in Cebu in 2006. So you've been with that woman some years, which is a good thing. I know some of it, you were in um, China, but you've been with her many years. And I know you were with that German woman prior to all that. But who cares about her? You're with the right person now. <laughs> has she changed and i don't mean changed i know you did a video recently about filipinas changing when they come back here i mean it's a silly question she's got older now 
as you have, as I have, can you tell that she's changed? Really? You're joking. And she's got children, hasn't she? I know you've got kids from a previous, but she's got grown up children. Your wife now, I mean, you're Filipina. Oh, she had a cancer operation. Oh, yeah. Yikes. What, oh, six kids? Wow. But you know what, Ian? Oh, like I said, please excuse that. Um, at the end of the day, you're happy. Listen, nobody is 100% happy. So when I talk about being happy in the Philippines, it's like anywhere else. You're never going to be happy no matter where on this planet 100% of the time. But being here, if you've been here for a while, you're going to be as happy as you can be. Oh, dear me. Yikes. Yeah, and that's a good thing, you know, Ian. It worked out for you. And I know you said it was your job initially that took you to China. You met her, you're, you're Filipina. But you know what? You could have been one of those people. No, I don't want to go to China. I don't want to leave this country, UK. Um, you could have gone to China. No, I don't want a Filipina. I want a Chinese girl. And I know it's all fate. It's all kismet. It's all luck. But you met the person for you in the end. You had to go through the German woman, as I had to go through, who I had to go through, to get there. And perhaps your, your wife, Ian, had to go through whoever she had to go through before she met you the one cool do you like her cooking in that's a stupid question i know <laughs> really I wonder why you refused. Maybe you were seeing a Chinese girl or something. Ah, uh, okay. You know what, Ian, I can't stand the rice here. Um, even though we buy the normal rice here, I insist on having basmati rice and my wife likes basmati as well. So most of the time we eat basmati rice. We've still got a big sack of the ordinary rice that you get here. The better quality ordinary rice, I mean. And occasionally, if she has a family around, she uses that rice. But basmati, I love basmati rice. <clears throat> oh, another Ricola I'm going to have to have. No, I don't want to eat them all. I have to save some for tonight. The good thing about me, Ian, is I can cook. So it doesn't matter to me <clears throat> if nobody cooks or not. I will cook myself. My wife's pretty good because she worked overseas for 13 years in the Middle East. <clears throat> and so she can cook quite, quite well. My voice is going because I've got a cold coming. Some people would be very glad that I can shut my big fat mouth. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, but Ian, you have those funny flavoured ones. I'm sure I saw those in Lidl's. Mind you, the ones in Lidl's were good because I did used to buy them from Lidl's. Heinz baked beans, overrated. I used to like Cross and Blackwell. They had a tinny can kind of flavour.
I used to like putting Worcester sauce on it, baked beans. Ian, I often wondered, I'm assuming the answer's no. Does your wife still work or she doesn't? I don't think she does, but <clears throat> she doesn't need to, I suppose. But Britbox have different brands. So I'm going to, oh, okay, okay, fair enough. I'm surprised you don't buy more, I was gonna say Cornish pasties, but I'm guessing they're quite expensive. She's never worked. What about when she was in China? She must have worked. Or did you not meet her out in China? Am I getting that mixed up? Oh, I have to um, charge this. It's gone blue, the, the battery. Oh, I see. But like I said, Ian, do you know what? Regardless, you met the one for you. Who cares about the others that you never met? They don't exist. As the ones don't exist for the ones <coughs> I never met. All I know were the ones I met weren't the right ones before. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure your wife cleans up your house every single day. Yes, I agree, Topo. Uh, anyway, I'm going to have to conclude this bit of a boring live stream. It wasn't the best, I know. Bit boring, I understand. Oh. Luckily, Ian, she's not watching this. Because you'd be in for it, boy. <laughs> well, hold on, Ian. She's not that lazy, because when you're making a video, she's in the background, you know, doing all that, you know, engaging with your audience. That takes kind of effort, I think. Do you know my problem at the moment, Ian? I'm monetized. I've said this before in a video. And when you get monetized, Ads, AdSense, you've got to belong to AdSense, which is part of Google. And they've got to send to your home address a PIN number to prove that you live there. I'm having, and you've got four months to receive that letter. You, you can request up to four times for them to resend it. From America, I'm having real problems. Nothing's coming. Nothing's arrived, and without that PIN number, you can't get any of the money you've made, and they will demonetize your channel. Ah, that's all show. I'm sure you're being quite modest, um, Ian. <clears throat> okay then, Ian. If she doesn't do the housework, then you must. Am I correct? Ian, I've got a challenge for you. Because you said you're six foot two, you're in the army. I've got a challenge for you. When you do one of your future videos, you know, with your wife in the background, as she is eating, say all that there about her. I dare you. If you're really a man, Ian, say it in front of her. <coughs> of course, I want you to still eat your Cornish pasty. Don't forget that. I bet you won't. Only joking, Ian. So, Ian, how long have you considered me to be a nutcase? Loco, mad, crazy. From the early beginnings of Postcard Mindanao, or a little bit in to me making videos, a little bit further down the line. When was it you first thought, the guy's a nutter, a raving loony? He's not compo mentos. He's not like us. 
he's completely insane. I think that's why people watch my videos, Ian, because they never know who or what. You probably were. People don't know who or what I am or what I'm going to do next. Is it going to be a stupid video, uh, video where I'm the P, the P's sister, or the Joker from Batman? Am I going to do a really good, serious, motivational video, or one just about the Philippines and a situation in the Philippines, you know? Yeah, you are, that, and I thank you for that. Of course, back then, in the early days, I, you must have had your channel, but I don't think I checked your channel out. And uh, so I didn't really know you as such. I just knew the picture of you both on your avatar, avatar and that was it. But when I started watching your videos, then I began to, knew, to know the real person or the persona of the real person that you show on here. Yes, I did, uh, Flying High, over 20 years. I work with... Um, learning disabilities and all types of mental health in adults alongside psychologists psychiatrists doctors and mental health nurses so i've seen the whole spectrum of mental health which is why i did that mental health video I was hoping to get some sort of support group going, but I had a few people that emailed me and that was it. So fine, it's okay. Nope, never been a patient. I'm always willing to consider being one though, in the white room, just like the Joker, Arthur Fleck. Maybe I should do one of those polls on the community thing. Do you consider Phil crazy, half crazy, or as normal as I? I'll be insulted if you say as normal as you. If you do not think I'm totally mad, like Jack Nicholson in One Flu. Hi, spiritual prep, uh, prepper, dear Red Zone. You're completely, utterly sane. Oh, jeez. Do you know what, spiritual? I've got a cold brewing. Yeah, it's about the fifth time I've said it, I know. You've ruined my day by saying I'm sane. Oh, jeez. No, thanks. Listen, partly it's a persona. It's an act I put on. Because if I didn't, you'd be damn well bored. I'd be like every other vlogger. So some of it is an act, some of it is me. When I'm doing motivational, it's me, but I'm, I'm giving it some because I'm trying to get my message across. Because I always use this as an example. Anyway, if you want to come to the Philippines, you've got to have courage, just like me. What purpose would that serve? I can't talk loud because my son's asleep in the next room. So I've got to give it some, some oomph. But some is an act. Especially when I'm the Joker or... I bet you didn't know it was an act when I was Nancy. I bet you all thought I really was Nancy. Her sister, the Filipino peace sister. I bet you all thought I was her, didn't you? Well, you're wrong. Well, you, you might be right. Last time I looked in the mirror, I looked a bit like the Filipina pee. And when I was at school, they used to call me pee pee. When I wet myself, I didn't quite understand the reason why then, but as I grew more mature, I, I understood why they called me pee pee. <sighs> she doesn't, Ian. 
She never listens to my, uh, my videos, watches them. If I do them on the sunroof, um, the terraced roof, she's not there. If I do them here, she'll be with the baby asleep, with the aircon on in the bedroom, or she's out with the baby. So she's never here. I've done a few odd ones when she's maybe had family here in the early days when I used to do those type of videos. And you catch a glimpse of her. She's just not interested in being in the videos. It doesn't do anything for her. She has Facebook. She has plenty of photos on Facebook. But she's not interested in being in my videos. So she doesn't really have any clue what I do. You know what, spiritual prepper? I'm gonna go, I won't be able to sleep tonight thinking I'm sane. You care, it's not like a bad dream. Don't let dreams of Cornish pass. I know, I know exactly, Fly. My, my mother's still alive. I speak to her every day on Facebook Messenger. You don't have to tell me. I knew exact. listen, I saw the beginnings of the, of, uh, the UK go downhill when I was still a teenager in the 1970s, me and my friend at the time, we began, but it wasn't severe. The 80s was okay. I still think the 80s were highly overrated, but there you go. And then from about 96, 97, and it wasn't just Tony Blair. It was happening before Blair, and whether Blair had been there or not, it still would have happened. It is a shizen hole. If, he, if Ian's on, he'll know what Scheisenhauser means. Sprechen Sie Deutsch, because Ian can Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Ja. The UK is a Scheisenhauser. Ochtung, Ian. <clears throat> yeah. But I bet you're not so clever, Ian, if I speak in Danish to you. Ja, ich kann lit dansk. Ja. Hmm. Ja, ich verstehe und dem Ika. Didn't think he was so clever, Ian. <clears throat> My middle name's Bob Monkhouse. When I was younger, and I told a joke, everybody used to laugh. When I grew up, and I told a joke, I've said that one wrong, haven't I? And now I've grown up, and I'm a comedian, no one's laughing now. I think that, that was one of Bob Monkhouse's. Judge Pickles. Uh, it sounds familiar. No, she's too old. She's not in the best of health. No, even if she was younger, I don't think this is not for her. If it was, and she were able, I'd have her here. My wife would have her here. But you know what? I do miss fish and chips. I miss those things in life. Chinese takeaway, kebabs, Indian, you know, takeaway, things like that. Things that I like, ice pops, you know, ice pops, they're crap here. They're not the same as the ones we have in the UK. I used to be addicted to ice pops. Yeah, that's why it's important for me to phone her, uh, to speak to her every day on Facebook. What are so expensive ice pops? Oh, maybe you mean Cornish pasties. Oh, fish and... Yeah, listen, before I left, so I've been here two years, I used to live in Enfield, and there was a wonderful fish and chip shop there. And I used to order... I used to like Place and Haddock, but uh, I kind of started to like Cod. 
I used to order a large cod. No chips, just cod. It was nine quid and it went up to nine pound fifty. Ridiculous. I can tell you a story, if you like, not in here, maybe one of my videos. You know one of my stories with women of my past? When I worked in mental health for one of the local London boroughs, the councils, on a Friday, we used to order fish and chips. The clients would have to pay for it at a reduced rate. So the woman that owned the fish and chip shop was in her... I guess early 50s, Greek, speaks good English, fairly attractive. Guess what I had to do for her to keep those prices low for the clients. Maybe I'll talk about it in a video. And I had to do it six o'clock in the morning before my work started. <sighs> Sometimes a man's work never ends. No bullshit story, the truth. Mm. Oh. Ah, Ian, let me ask you a question, important here. What is, if any, is there any Philippines fish that's the nearest to like cod or place or anything we have? The reason I'm asking, I'm thinking of maybe frying some fish in batter, but is there any fish that's nearly somewhat like our fish? <laughs> Lee Valley. Ah, really? Well, I didn't exa I worked near there. I didn't live there. I lived in the London Borough of Enfield. I lived flying, you're going to know it, Oakwood. 12 minutes away by bus, Oakwood. And before that, Southgate, many years ago, Arnors Grove, Barnet. I know that's part of the London Borough of Barnet, but that backs on to the end of Enfield. Okay, thanks, Ian. Listen, I'm going to have to end this kind of quick now. I can hear the baby's woken up. That means the baby and my wife will be in here soon, so I can't do a live any longer. Oh, okay, cool. I know there are some parts of the Philippines that are cooler. Hurry up, Ian, with the name of that fish. I'm going to have to cut this off any second now. Ian, come on, get in that freezer. Tell me the name of that fish. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. And in your opinion, Ian, that's pretty similar to our kind of cod. Uh, it would be nice to take the bread knife up there. She would love it. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Thanks a lot, Ian. That's cool. I'm, I'm going to tell her that. Pan gaseous Philip Pan. She's never heard of it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to have to go now because everyone's awake. So have a good day or evening and take care. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Ian, Flying High, Andy, Prepper, and all the rest. Bye, bye.